my question is, what was the hardest lesson for you to learn with regard to putting up content? I'm telling you right now, this is the single most important thing in our society when it comes to business. If you are not putting out content on the Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTubes of the world, you are becoming vulnerable and irrelevant over time. Most of you don't put out enough content because you're trying to think about what to say. Just filming yourself on your hustle and talking about your truth, that's the content you need to put out. You have to make content for the internet. Content is the gateway drug to growth in business in today's environment. About to head into this keynote. Uh, this is in the real estate wholesale market here in Dallas. A um, bunch of people who go out and get contracts for real estate and then flip them to other people who are investors. So just a bunch of hustlers doing their thing, grinding. I understand that. We're in the back of a golf cart, Jason and I right now. <laughs> Making content on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and podcasts will change the course of your careers. Over time, if you do not have brand on the internet, you will become more vulnerable to somebody who does. So, you've got to figure out how you communicate, whether it's video, written word, or audio. Please do not underestimate building personal brand on the web. It matters, it will continue to matter, it's gonna continue to matter more, and realize that you just have to document. You don't have to make something up. Don't front like you did a bunch of deals and try to act the part. Fake it till you make it as some 1987. First of all, if you tell the truth, you will have so many people admire your bravery for telling the truth that they'll follow you for just that reason. I'm trying to lose out here. I'm not joking, because that's the truth. Uh, my man grabbed me before, why, why do I always put out that piece of content that I passed on Uber twice and lost a half a billion dollars? I love telling that story. It's an L, I lost. Like what people don't understand about that Uber story, me passing, that's like my man. Like the, like the 100 people that I invested in that I just met like this, sat down and invested, I passed twice on my man. Like that was, that's on some meant to be. Like it wasn't time for me. <laughs> like that's all I could like. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? Like I love telling that story. It's just a game, right? It's just the truth. Like the more you just tell the truth, like that really happened. <laughs> but if you think I care what you think about my L, you're super confused. My question is, what was the hardest lesson for you to learn with regard to putting up content? Like whether it was something you were doing that you shouldn't be or something that you weren't that you should have been? That's a great question. You know what's funny? It's back to kind of how I answered that question. I'm so not good at thinking about like the negatives of things, like it's hard for me to even recall. I, first of all, I was very early, right? I, I was one of the first people on YouTube, one of the first people on Twitter. So I learned whatever, like I think, the, you know, actually I got one. I've been so right so consistently that a lot of who I am right now in this room telling people to push, the biggest lesson I had to learn is I kept being so right, but I didn't squeeze every ounce out of it when I was right. Uh, to use, I don't play poker, but to use the, the analogy, I would consistently have the best hand, but I wasn't going all in, right? Like my great business regret is I was right about Google AdWords. I, I ran Google AdWords the day Google AdWords st started. The day. And it was one of the biggest arbitrages ever, right? And I took my dad's business from three to 60 and everybody gives me daps for that, but always in my mind, you know, when sometimes I'm, and he took his family's, you know, when I'm getting announced in the stage, every time I'm like, should have been 250 because I should have went harder. And I've been saying it now for three years and a lot of people here who follow me will tell you, now that the Facebook arbitrage is not as good, now that they're starting to see the Instagram, uh, if you've been paying attention to Instagram the last month, it feels like it's starting to, that you're not getting as many likes and views as you did. Like, I keep telling people, and like, it goes away. It's like, you know, I don't know how long people have been in real estate, like you find a new neighborhood that was up and then it gets genderfied and you bought one house and you're like, I should have bought seven. So the one lesson that I continue to try to get better at is when I've got it, I squeeze the out of it. So for example, right now I believe LinkedIn's really working for content, so I'm going hard, hard. You're gonna become vulnerable, you know? But that might be okay because for a lot of people, if you're hardwiring as a behind the scenes man, I'd rather you keep 
that like lose the 25 to 50 percent upside of a personal brand than to do something that doesn't come natural or that you don't like. Because I, but the thing that I want to challenge you and people with that DNA is do most people when they look at a personal brand they see narcissism, they see showing off, I see reputation. And if you can look at it, you see where I'm going? This is just like, I, I believe that a lot of quiet, more introverted, more behind the scenes people disproportionately overjudge people that are out in front and deploy cynicism and see it as the worst version. I just see I have a reputation. Listen, good news, Nike, especially if it comes natural to you. There's a lot more people that build brands than personal brands. There's a lot more Nikes and Adidas's and McDonald's than there are me, you know? And that's what you should do. But, but, don't let video or pictures throw you off. Like just even listening to how articulate you are, I'm like, this podcast would kill. So maybe you just go audio. People, you know, people, a lot of people, you know, a lot of my female entrepreneurs hit me up, they're like, Gary, you don't get it. Like, I'm like, I do get it. I understand that you're held to a different standard and you're judged by your looks. It's not a very complicated concept. <laughs> I do get it. Like, yes, I understand you're judged the way we aren't. It's, I got it. Um, and so for that reason, they don't like go there. I'm like, right, audio. Or get over it and stop worrying about people saying you, your eyeshadow sucks. So what, you still watch my video. Exactly, and more importantly, like, my big thing with comments, just once and for all, because I want I, I know so many of you are not doing your thing because of judgment. You should feel bad for people that took time to watch and leave something yeah. negative. Yeah. Like, who has time to watch somebody and then mustered up the energy to leave a comment? Like, think about where their life's at. It's like, you know, this is why I love athletes so much. There's so many parallels to things I believe in. Like, he can't worry about fans booing in the crowd. Like, you're going nowhere if that's what you're gonna do. You can't make that adjust your game. You don't even really end up hearing it because you're in your zone. So my question, uh, my dream, my, my ultimate dream is to be on Team Gary and be doing community management and- You want to move to New York? Yeah. Let's do it.